Good afternoon, morning, day. Hello, good, uh, good everything as well. <laughs> Hi, Emily. So I think Matthew is our facilitator today, but I do not see him dialed in. This is Matthew. Hi, Matthew. Pardon for my uh, delay. I started up my Windows virtual machine and it decided to do a couple rounds of reboots and updates uh, without being told. <laughs> so, and people wonder why I'm such a Linux promoter. <laughs> uh, should we give a couple more minutes for everyone to be on the call? I think there's going to be a couple of people um, attending Brandon's presentation, so we might not have everybody today. Okay, I'll hold back for one more minute while I get my camera going, and then I'm all good to go. Uh, is there anyone that wants to take care of uh, Scribe slash minutes today? I've already got Scribe one. Thank you, Emily. I can try to fill in the blanks of scribe too, sure. Okay, so all good to go. I don't see any updates from the attendees jotted down this far, and there was already a planned discussion slash presentation by Vine. So, um, Vine, the floor is yours. Great. Uh, thanks, Matthew. Th thanks, everyone. Uh, uh, I wanted to uh, share some ideas that I put down in issue uh, 405. I have posted a link on the um, on the CNCF meeting document as well. And uh, without further ado, I'll get uh, started with sharing my screen.
So uh, see the idea that I've been working on for a little while as I've been uh, you know, scouting and scouring the, the security landscape is one thing that's missing is a security reference architecture for cloud native applications and the CI CD pipeline. And as uh, many of us would agree, I mean, it's, it's a very, very common theme that a lot of operators are struggling with. And so what I wanted to do was to actually propose this kind of a security reference architecture for cloud native applications, as well as the CID CICD pipeline, with the goal of providing operators and uh, DevOps uh, uh, architects a holistic view and an approach for cloud native security for them to actually understand what are all the different uh, parts of the puzzle that go to actually, you know, injecting security. And how do you think about security as you're building out large scale, uh, horizontally scaled applications, microservices? And as we know that these are highly ephemeral, so how do they how do they need to think about the security landscape and how do they appropriately inject security throughout the entire life cycle, right? From build, deploy to run. And it uh, one of the other goals is also to provide operators with a blueprint in order to operationalize security. You know, how do they think about it? What are the missing pieces? What should they be aware of? What are they missing? So the goal here is rather than for everyone to continue to reinvent the wheel, I think there is an opportunity for us as the potentially the SIG security group to actually say, here's how you know, we index security. Here's how you should be thinking about security. Here's how you should be incorporating security for all your cloud native applications and like provide a bird's eye view into what that looks like. And also how do you build out like a entire process and a pipeline to match that blueprint and uh, demonstrate. And, and another uh, goal that I thought would be really good was to actually uh, demonstrate the mapping of all the CNCF projects in terms of the blueprint. Uh, that's a work in progress, and I'll also talk a little bit more about that. And and the other objective is also to figure out how we can actually make it available via the SIG security as as a, as a reference for as we publicize this, as operators are thinking about, hey, what are all the different mechanisms and approaches that I need to be adopting and enforcing in order to inject security? And I use the word inject because, you know, Traditionally, we all have been in that world where security has always been bolted on, but how do you now inject and incorporate security right through the development and the deployment phases and to actually provide this as a reference to the community uh, for uh, security for cloud native workloads. So that's the objective and the benefit. I don't have too many slides, so feel free to interject if you have any questions, comments, suggestions as we uh, go through this. May I uh, throw one your way now, Vinay? Sure. So I guess, I guess you already answered a question. I always forget to ask at the beginning questions in the middle or save them for the end. Um, in terms of actually, I guess, uh, encouraging people to adopt it, uh, what would you say is, I guess, the, the most practical or pragmatic uh, element that gets people to treat it as this is something we can integrate as we go without really many pain points or loss of project velocity versus uh, as you said, bolted on at the end sort of thing as an afterthought because there isn't time for it. Uh, what do you think is the key parts of what you're describing here that uh, encourages voluntary adoption? So obviously it's, um, I mean, the, 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 obviously the current problem is the, you know, we always talk about it where, you know, security and DevOps are not meeting eye to eye. Right. And I think that's firstly, that's the, the and just we're recognizing that's the fundamental problem. And that's also because, you know, security teams are so often brought in at the flag end of projects or, you know, so once all the development, all the everything is done and then security teams are made aware of it and saying, hey, you now you can maybe just give me a stamp of approval as I really, really need to deploy this application into production. And that's obviously the reason for a lot of this friction. And then there is this concept that, you know, security needs to be embedded, but then DevOps teams don't think that you have the right tools and the capabilities for them to really adopt with their, with their need for agility. And then security doesn't think that DevOps knows how to get security right. As, as a developer and as a security person myself, you know, I built large scale applications, but I'll be honest, security was the last 
uh, paradigm, right? That I think about, you know, because I need to develop this application. I need to make sure it's highly available. I need to make sure it's reliable. I need to go through all of that. So security is, is the last thing on my mind. And we've always thought about it as someone else's responsibility. And to answer your question, maybe to say, how can we uh, change that perception is to provide DevOps teams with the right tools and the capabilities so that they can actually adopt it. And more and more, as I think about this, I feel like the key concept there is also developers are far more willing to make changes and fixes and address issues and bugs, if you will, when they're developing a new feature, when it's brand spanking new in front of our eyes, then maybe two weeks later or three weeks later, when we've already moved on to the next uh, feature or capability that we want to develop. So this actually fosters, meets the DevOps and the developers where they are. So providing them the right tools and the visibility, and I'll talk about what that really, really means in the next slide. But you know, when you're making a pull request, you know, make sure that your security debt is not continuously increasing. Unit testing, system testing, integration testing is fundamental. Let's make security testing fundamental. So putting in together the, 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 these processes and, and showcasing the ideal state and empowering DevOps with the right tools really, really, really goes a long way in ensuring that they adopt those capabilities and incorporate security throughout the process. Uh, is that, uh, did that answer your question a little bit? Yep, that's on the money. Thank you, Vinay. Sounds good, sure thing. So um, what I, uh, you know, put together is this concept of uh, the, the, the life cycle is so important when you talk about cloud native applications and deployments, right? Which is you have the development phase, once your artifacts have been developed, you know, you go through the build phase, these artifacts now are built in, you know, for, for our purposes, for example, the form factor is container images. You go through building all the different layers, pulling all your dependencies, you build your container image, push it into a container registry, and then go through a whole bunch of testing. So I've, I've, I've identified four distinct phases, which I think we'll all agree with, which is develop, build, deploy, and then obviously the run phase. And what I've tried to do is in this particular uh, view, I think this is the, um, the best practices view. And then the next slide talks about an operationalizing view to say that, you know, here's how your code is being developed. You have different types of code, custom code, your dependencies that you're pulling in. You also have infrastructure as code, which is your Terraform templates, your cloud formation templates, ARM templates, what have you, as well as you're now uh, representing all aspects of your application as Kubernetes manifests, for example, right? And all of these is now going part as your your code, if you will, including your infrastructure and all of these application definitions, and you push them and you make a pull request, right? And then as part of this pull request, the point is to say that in your development phase, you have the ability to do so, uh, various security scans. So for example, uh, you know, we've seen even in my day-to-day uh, -day that, you know, as we are developing so many new automation templates and capabilities, you know, once again, there are so many new services that we're leveraging. We don't really, really know all the, the high value security controls that you need to be enforcing and applying, right? So that's the point here. And if we could actually scan these templates, scan your Kubernetes manifest, make sure that you don't have insecure defaults and actually fail a commit, if you will, and provide that feedback to the developer right at the commit phase, it's very, very powerful, right? So that's the point that you can do. So once those things are validated, and if you, let's say, for example, it goes through your validation and your policies process in the develop in the pull request phase, your code gets checked into your source code management. And then in the build phase is when you apply the next set of capabilities. And I'm gonna talk about this more from an operationalization aspect in the next slide, but the point of this slide is to say, for example, in the build phase, and I also want to highlight the fact, hopefully it's evident by now, the light blue uh, boxes are all the security capabilities, right? That you can enforce at all the different phases of the uh, development and the deployment pipeline. So in the, the light blue is, you know, once your code has been checked, you all obviously want to run it through your static checkers. You want to be able to 
perform the vulnerability scans. You want to be able to do the image scanning, uh, infrastructure as code scanning, as well as your Kubernetes. And then the also the notion here also encompasses that you know developers need to move fast. So you probably have a looser set of policy security policies that you want to enforce at the develop phase. But then when you go into the build phase, it's maybe it's now you're going from the, the dev environment to your test environment. In your test environment, you have stricter policies that you want to apply. So you have the capability of applying a different set of stricter, potentially stricter policies at the build phase. But then you apply all of these security um, uh, capabilities and actions and then the ultimate artifacts are your cloud images or your container images or your serverless images and then in the in and then straddling the build and the deploy phase is is the uh, is the phase of testing which i talked about you know no code goes into production without going through significant well unit system integration tests and the point theme also here is that you know we want security testing to be uh, 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 a mainstay as part of that, uh, that, that process as well. So once you've done your application testing, so if you have failures, what happens is it gets pushed back, developers look into it, fix your bugs, fix your issues, and it goes back through the process. Similarly, we want to apply the same rigor to security testing, where you want to scan your AMIs, your container images, your manifests, and your uh, infrastructure as code templates based on vulnerabilities, config, and compliance uh, scanning capabilities. A simple example, just to maybe I shouldn't make any assumptions just to give you context as to what the compliance scanning, for example, is, right? Uh, when we want to deploy a, a, a cluster, for example, in uh, GKE, for example, you know, just making sure that your, um, your Kubernetes API server, for example, is not exposed to the world, you know, stuff like that. If you're having a database, make sure that your database is encrypted. You're make, ensuring that your keys are secured properly. Make sure that the database is not exposed to the internet. You know, all those kinds of checks and with this new cloud native pattern and paradigm, we have an unprecedented ability to catch it even before all of these assets are deployed into the uh, runtime. And that's the point, right? And we can fix it. So it f tremendously improves the security posture of applications that get deployed in production, if you will, right? So in the deploy phase, you have the ability to actually apply a lot of these uh, security uh, rigor testing uh, and uh, approaches. And then obviously in the run phase, which is either in your cloud or your on-prem across different asset classes, if you will, which is serverless containers, host VMs, you need network security, you need runtime security, you need the capabilities for micro segmentation, uh, visibility, monitoring, logging, tracing. So all of these are fundamental uh, infrastructural components that are absolutely necessary in order to run uh, cloud native applications, which are once again, characterized by scale and, uh, and, uh, and numbers and highly ephemeral characteristics. But this architecture and the, the, the representation is to help a lot of operators who are not as familiar as us who live this, have breathe this day in and day out to get a bird's eye view onto the, the concepts that they need to be aware of and, uh, and thinking about as they are deploying cloud native applications. So on the far left, you have the different phases. And then on the second to last bar, I tried to kind of represent the applicability. So for example, the code commit is pretty much your develop phase. And then your build and deploy is your CI CD pipeline. And then of course the uh, run phase is pretty much your infrastructure IAS uh, PaaS and CAS capabilities. And the fact that you also want to have operate your policies across all these three or four different um, phases of the uh, application deployment life cycle. So, um, and then I'd love to have a discussion. I mean, this is just a preliminary, I wanted to uh, put this out there, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that more. And uh, once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me. But the next slide that I wanted to talk about is, you know, how does, uh, uh, how do operators actually think about operationalizing? So this is more of the operational view, if you will, to, you know, take a lot of those components that we talked about, but then how do you build and integrate and incorporate all of these different concepts and capabilities and tools into your entire uh, development process, right? So once again, it starts with uh, 
uh, your, your DevOps, your users, your developers, your operations folks, and others who are developing these capabilities such as custom code, your Docker files, Kubernetes manifest, infrastructure as code capabilities. And then we talked about being checked into your uh, source code management system. Now you have the ability to actually have uh, uh, commit pre-hooks where you can actually check. And we talked about all the different types of scans that are possible to ensure that these are best practices security controls that now you can apply even before your infrastructure is running. So you can catch all of these capabilities and flag it and uh, make the appropriate uh, changes. And then I also wanted to highlight the fact that there are so many different capabilities, right? So for example, with the advent of open source tooling, there's so much of open source. I've never worked at a place where everyone actually had a perfect visibility into all the open source tooling, the uh, libraries that they have, all the licensing implications thereof for both the, uh, the, the library as well as when ultimately their own application. So uh, the source code composition analysis capabilities play a very important role. And then you actually now run through all your security capabilities, which is defined and then with the development environment policies, right? As I talked about it. So you do your static analysis, you do your vulnerability scans, you do your IAC scans and the Kubernetes manifest scans. And then, so security is a first class citizen. You wanna be able, these are the best practices. I mean, these are the best practice uh, steps that you need to execute if they're evaluated. If any failure, uh, if it results in a failure, you go back to the drawing board, go back and then, so those things, there's a constant feedback loop for the developer. They're able to fix what issues they now. We, once again, I think the underlying theme also is we, we can't expect developers and DevOps folks to be security experts, but now with the right tooling and the capabilities, you have contextualized information on for them to actually take remedial action. And, if everything is uh, checks out, it passes, it gets checked into your source code management system, and then it goes into the your, your build. So let's go ahead and build all these different artifacts. It goes and fetches all the dependencies. It goes through and builds your container images or AMIs or serverless images. And then your build artifacts are now uh, 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 checked in, for example, into your catalog, virtual machine catalogs, container registries, server registries. And then the next step is now, this is where, uh, uh, which is uh, where I would love input from uh, the folks in, 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 in our group here, where now I wanna showcase how we wanna incorporate best practices in, in terms of uh, signing images. We wanna make sure all your images are signed. So then once the so images are all signed, then you go into your application testing that we talked about, which is system and integration tests. If there's a failure, go back to the drawing board. And then the next step is to perform your scans with your test environment policies. These are potentially stricter policies, right? So you make sure that your images are always scanned based on policies, make sure that all your security controls are being uh, applied um, uh, accurately. You know, for example, um, the NIST 800-190, you know, this is an opportunity to actually bring that in into your build pipeline and validate that your, 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 your Kubernetes or your container orchestration platform is appropriately secured. Your, your, for example, you're not running your applications as a root user, you don't, you're not, um, you don't have, uh, you're not running as a, a, as a privileged container. It's just so many different things that, you know, now we can actually catch and actually test for in your build pipeline. And then once this is passed through, then we want to actually now, uh, you know, for example, this is where I want to bring it back to the vision that I have in terms of, let's talk about the Intoto project, right? Where you're talking about software supply chain security. So this concept of this controller and how it can actually validate that your images have been signed, there has not been any kind of modification or, or, or changing of your binaries and your images, et cetera. But you have the opportunity to in the, in, inject these policies and these capabilities at different parts of the deployment pipeline. And then you go into the deployment phase where then now you can actually incorporate these steps to validate the image, uh, the hash, the signatures, et cetera, uh, enforce certain kinds of using admission controllers, potentially runtime image policy, and then your runtime compliance policies. And then there are three different capabilities yet again. And as you can see, which is the uh, configuration, the appropriate security of the container orchestration platform, then the appropriate configuration for your, the, the, the hosts, as well as the pods, right? So that's the kind of representation that I've tried to afford here. 
and you want to make sure that uh, you have the right policies. Uh, there are so many best practices, and this goes back to now the platforms that we work in, whether it's Kubernetes or OpenShift or one of the cloud vendor uh, managed platforms, it's still a shared responsibility model. So you have to, they give you the capabilities. So you have to make sure that they are enforcing the right capabilities. So uh, for example, the NIST 800-190 is a special publication that talks about container and uh, security for container and application containers. So there is a whole bunch of security controls. So you need to make sure that you are applying those best practices in your, for your container orchestration platform. And, and there's so many different, as I talked about, give you examples about privileged containers, etc. So, and we need to make sure that our operators are aware of them and then make sure that they need to take steps to actually enforce that. So here's how, here's providing an ability to showcase how they can, they can think about enforcing those kinds of best practices. And then you talk about the hosts, make sure that the hosts are appropriately secured and configured based on your compliance controls. Uh, and then you also we need to make sure that those hosts are appropriately locked down in terms of either network policies or network security, make sure that they're not making unsanctioned access to malicious domains, etc. And then we talk about pods, right? So you have to think about container question. and the pod securities. Yes. A uh, quick question, Vinay. I was um, wondering, with respect to, I guess, one of the final deliverables, like if this was to be seen through to fruition, what do you see as the uh, ultimate deliverable? Like, is it a large, heavily documented slash well-designed documentation wiki, kind of like, say, the Kubernetes documentation? Does it have specific examples without necessarily advertising or advocating a specific implementation? Like, here's how you do feature XYZ with GitLab, with Jenkins, or some other pieces like that. Is it meant to be a broad documentation uh, project? And uh, B, is it uh, something, uh, for lack of a better term, somewhat uh, democratized in the sense that the request is that once it's in the right uh, direction and it has enough maturity, CNCF uh, officially adopts it and endorses it, for example? So I guess yeah. what are the uh, desired implementation outcomes? Rough ballpark, I know that's always down the road. And B, what's the intent in terms of, uh, I guess, audience and promoting it? Yeah, no, all, all great questions. So initially, um, I think the the premise is that, it, it, you know, it's a very, very, these are very, very complex systems. As we can imagine, each of these is a big project in itself. Like, like for example, if you take into consideration hardware. No argument for me there. I beg your pardon? Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll mute myself. I was just saying no argument for me on there. I, I concur. Yeah, so, and, and that's the sense, right? So these are very, very complex projects. So we want to actually help our operators and our users, ultimate users along the way in, in, in helping them understand how they can wrap their heads around it, how they can approach it, how they should be thinking about it, how they can adopt it, right? So the first goal is to give them some kind of a sense as to how they can, what are all the different components that they need to be indexing as they're putting together a plan for, uh, you know, Fundamentally, their CI/CD pipelines for cloud-native applications. But then, I, I I think we would all agree that we don't want to be uh, let security be a bolted-on capability, right? So we want to constantly advocate that security needs to be built in. So we want to highlight all the different, uh, generically speaking, the security capabilities that needs to be incorporated into this entire DevOps and DevOps process. Right. So, so some kind of a, a consumable document that gives them a bird's eye view in terms of what are all the different components and then how can you operationalize. And then if, 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 the, if this group feels like we can take it a step further, which I think we could in one example of that is to actually say, how do we take Harbor? How do we take Intoto? How do we take Tough? How do we take, uh, I don't know, certain other capabilities, binary authorization, all those different capabilities, and, and then take a generic framework and make it a specific use case, right? So I think there's potential to uh, take it further and make it a little bit more specific. But the initial goal is to provide like a, a totally generic uh, agnostic platform and potentially portraying the ideal state. I think, I think that's my initial goal, but I think, and that's where I'd love to hear feedback and comments from uh, the community here on how we could take it forward and elaborate yeah. and really 
um, make it useful for our users? I, I think, uh, first of all, I just want to say I think this is great. Um, I think one thing that has struck both me and I think um, probably is striking others is, is that this is actually very um, similar in many ways to the goals of both the white paper that we were planning to do as a group and the landscape. Um, and I think, uh, in fact, we, uh, some folks who've been working on those two efforts have uh, had met a week or so ago and came to the conclusion that we actually have a lot more overlap with what we're doing than what we were thinking uh, perhaps from the outset we might have. Um, and I just want to say that I think it would be good for us to all, like for, for you to, to join those conversations along with others that are interested in this because I think now that we're sort of, you know, three times independently seeing the need for the same thing and taking what on the surface looks like it has some very mild differences, but I think underneath really doesn't, you know, it is mostly the same way of presenting the same information. Um, it, it would just be, I think, better for us to kind of converge on something rather than having three different, almost identical perspectives on basically the same topic. Is there a specific conversation or a thread I could copy paste a link to in Slack, uh, Justin, just so we could say, hey, here's this presentation, here's the link to the YouTube recording when it goes up, let's converge these discussion threads. Um, I'll have to look on that. Um, because what's largely happened at this point has been the landscape work has um, mostly been uh, Brandon and myself, although um, we, we have had uh, a bit of feedback also from Yiling. Um, and the, um, I think the, the write-up has mostly been Emily and JJ. I think we've been sort of reusing uh, this, this SIG security chairs and tech leads channel that we talk on sometimes for some of that discussion, especially since we've really only had one initial meeting. So maybe this is, um, maybe this is something where we need to create a new channel and open it and let people come in and discuss um, or open the, uh, open the existing um, tech landscape channel and, and do that. Um, let me let me follow up with others and we'll figure out something to do this and we'll have that like making this a public thing um, that we'll mention how to get to from SIG Security uh, before the next meeting. Hey Justin, could you um, remind everybody what the landscape is and then I'll follow up with a little bit about what the white paper is just so everybody has an understanding because I don't think we've discussed it often enough across several of these meetings. Got it. Okay. Um, the landscape, uh, I think actually this diagram that's up is an ideal way to talk about what the landscape is and isn't supposed to be. It's basically supposed to be the flow of um, how, uh, sorry, so it's supposed to be a way for you, can, to, for you to figure out what tools and uh, processes and things exist to add security throughout the way in which you're um, making, deploying, maintaining, so on, your um, cloud native application. And so um, the idea would be is that you could go into something like uh, the picture that you have here, which we have a picture that's a little different um, in some ways, but is, is kind of in spirit um, fairly similar here. And then you can go and click on things and you can see like these are the concerns that you should have at this level. Like these are the types of attacks that have historically happened. These are the types of protections that are available. And these are what will happen if you apply these protections. Like this protection here will make it so that um, you know, it doesn't stop somebody from breaking in, but it allows you to detect it very quickly and mitigate it. Or this right here makes it so that even if they break in, the damage they cause is, is very limited in this way or whatever else. And um, the white paper 
is meant to be, um, well, actually, Emily, maybe I should let you talk about that because you've been more involved in it. So the white paper is intended to be that, uh, think of it as the landscape and the items that Vinay has been presenting, more at a high level C-suite executive overview. A better understanding for um, a technology officer or a CISO to get a get more get clear insight into what cloud native and cloud native security is and how that intersects with their development life cycle. How does that um, affect their organization's ability to adopt specific cloud products? Where should they be focusing some of their resources and some of the conversations that we've been having around that in the landscape is there there's overlap to audiences are slightly different, but a lot of the information can be used across them. Um, so with the white paper coming at it from the perspective of we have all of these stacks or ecosystems associated with cognitive practices. There's DevOps, there's the software development lifecycle, there's your core stack, whether or not you're using platform as a service or functions as a service, whatever it is that you're deploying on, or if you're bringing your own case instantiation, what does that stack actually look like? And then there's just the general application development that goes into all of that. What does your application definition look like and everything that goes into it? So these are all, it's essentially the culmination of the problem that anybody in security or anybody moving into cloud data has been having, and we're coming at it from a bunch of different angles either from the top down or from the bottom up because we've realized that there are people across all sections of the community that don't have access to this information you have to have been in for a long period of time to be able to put all of this together right um, that i have a question of the oh sorry go ahead Beanie. no no sorry so uh, uh, matthew uh michelle's had her hand up for a bit and uh yeah. Dr. Has another <laughs> Yeah, I have a couple of questions. One, how would you like the feedback on this? Would you like comments on the document? Or do you want, I, I see you have it in GitHub. How, how would you prefer? Because I have specific comments about the order of eight and 10. I don't know why you would sign. If signing is intended as a symbol of immutability, why would you have eight before 10? And why is there no distribution mechanism in place to maintain integrity of the supply chain better? Um, so I'd like to add that to the, however you'd like written feedback, but just let me know. Sure. Uh, thank you for that. I think you can, the commenting on the, on the ticket would be fantastic. On the ticket or the, or the document itself? Uh, either. I, I, oh, okay. I, okay, great, great. And I'm happy to contribute to this. We, um, I've worked on a, um, an attestation process before, cause I really think that it's more, um, it's about validation and attestation and it, it's um, but I, I have some concern in that like the reference architecture that you're prescribing <clears throat> is it could also be called a DevSecOps uh, mm -hmm. reference architecture, right? Mm -hmm. So where how where's the value add in, and there are ton, there are millions of those out there, right? So where's the value add in um, specifically like where are the differentiation points for cloud native, right? Um, I think <clears throat> that's uh, going to be important to note because this, you know, a lot of people see similar things out there. Um, is that, uh, sorry, I'm not trying to yeah, be. No, that's negative. a good is question. That helpful, no, that's a great point. Maybe if I could quickly just sound out on that. And I think some, I just opened the floor up and I know I just wanted to uh, have input. Uh, you know, I think the value add, for this group to be able to advocate for one of these kinds of uh, reference architecture is they have a lot of thought leaders and subject matter experts and then put, bring our, putting our heads together if we come up with some kind of uh, uh, an accepted validated paradigm that goes a long way in helping operators and adopters uh, uh, you know, uh, have confidence that they can adopt this kind of a paradigm, which, 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 which can get, gives some kind of weight given from, given the fact that it's been coming from this particular group, right? So I think that's the value I see in, in collaborating here and putting something out from, to answer that question. And uh, Chase, I believe uh, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I had a question or uh, maybe it's a comment or I don't know. Um, Funny enough, I made this similar diagram just in the last few months. Uh, 
for similar reasons, right? And uh, basically, this is very difficult to conceptualize and end without some kind of table conversation piece in a meeting with developers and other stakeholders, just within my organization, right? You just need a thing to where everybody knows that you're talking about number seven or everybody knows you're talking about number six. And without having, you know, this, uh, some kind of infographic, it's virtually impossible. Um, so that's my experience. But then the, and it's interesting, I think it was Justin who said that there were kind of have been three variants of recognizing that uh, all of the, all of the Lego pieces are dumped on the table, but nobody's really laid out like, well, if you, if you want to build a monster truck, right? It has wheels, it has an undercarriage, whatever, if you want to build a pirate ship, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but where I, I'm wondering if this is a gap and maybe it's an intentional one or maybe I'm way off on an island. Um, but if I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about it in terms of just the CMCF in general, uh, I want to be able to go to four or five or 12 or, or wherever. And I want to see what components of the CMCF ecosystem play here, right? If I go to the landscape, you know, when I was looking at this, I think I put in the notes that like, if, if CMCF were a company, right? And, and was trying to sell all this stuff, you're really, you're talking about like, a, not even quite a product roadmap, but like a portfolio, a portfolio view of like how all the components could fit together into a cohesive whole. But whereas this is, is generalized, right? Which is cool. And maybe that's the thought. I don't know if any, I wonder if any of the three variants have, have a goal of saying, Hey, this is where Harbor fits in. It covers some items of seven, you know, these points It covers some items of, I don't know what seven is here. I can't read it. But my point is just like, if I'm looking at, if I go and look at the landscape page for CMCF, all I see are 150 boxes and they're, they're grouped, but not, and, and they're sort of functionally grouped, but they're not um, process or workflow oriented in that way, right? So for me, like if I'm looking at this, I want to use it as a translation mechanism for like, how, you know, I need one thing out of this bucket to fit in here, you know, but it's not clear, at least to me, um, how the buckets translate for say, okay, you know, service providers, I remember as a category on the landscape pictorial, um, but like, you know, where does that, some of them are paths providers only, some of them are whatever, that would be an easy one to sort of draw straight lines to. But um, if that existed, boy, I would be overjoyed and I would use it all the time. So I'd be interested in contributing. And again, I don't know if, if that was on your mind or if that's appropriate, but that's the piece of this where, from what I've understood of the descriptions of the three initiatives, that may still be missing at the end of the rainbow. Yeah, I think yeah. just quickly it's, uh, highlight that. I think um, uh, that um, I think bullet number four. So that was one of the potentially the next steps where we could demonstrate the mapping of all the CNCF products, not all, but let's say as appropriate, you know, based on industry. Where I like what you said, you know, building this. Uh, monster truck, or I don't know what you said, the next other one was some other, uh, maybe a, a spaceship or whatever, for all these different, I think that as we, as we mature through these things, and I think that it can, it's applicable across all of them. And to actually showcase that, you know, here are ways in which you can put these Lego pieces together, to your point, I love the, the analogy, uh, uh, to build what, ultimately, this is what you want to build. But here are the pieces that you need. And here's how you can put those pieces together to potentially build, uh, uh, the Millennium Falcon, for example. So I said pirate ship, but Millennium Falcon is also acceptable. <laughs> and, and Justin, correct me if I'm wrong, but the intent with the landscape is to provide that level case that you're looking for. Yes. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thanks for that, uh, Justin. So I, because when I, I was on a, um, on, on a call where I think you and Brandon talked about the landscape and, uh, and I, I think maybe I got something a little different out of it uh, because maybe the granularity with which uh, uh, that presentation was done. I think I was trying to provide a little bit more of an abstracted view, but I think it could be highly complimentary and I'd love to uh, discuss that a little bit more. Yeah, so that, that's where the overlap between the landscape and the white paper comes in. The landscape is right. to provide that level of granularity with the explanations and the appropriate context for 
somebody doing that level of shopping, so to speak, mm -hmm. where the white paper provides that higher level of extraction and the, and the generalized concepts associated with it. Do you, what you presented kind of bridges that a little bit more between the two of them. That, that's something that the tech leads and the chairs have discussed um, last week. I see. Yeah, I mean, uh, to, I just I want to jump in for a quick second. I just want to jump in for a very quick second to ask if Justin Cormack had an update or something you want to present. I don't see any specific issues or PRs, so just want to make sure he has a window of opportunity if uh, there's anything you need to bring up. If not, we can leave the remaining 15 minutes for today's meeting with Vinay and everyone else. Yeah, no, I, actually, I'm, I'm, I just wanted to conclude with one last uh, few comments. Uh, you know, I'd love the collaboration, uh, sure. the ticket out there. So if we can collapse all these into some other ticket that makes more sense, happy to do that. But, and uh, Justin, if you could please just uh, uh, let us know where we could uh, have the f further conversations and how we could collapse these efforts, that'll be great. Awesome. So Vinay, uh, this is great. Um, you know your um, your input and and uh, uh, the goals here. You know align very much with um, with something that we've been been trying to tease out. And you know everyone who's uh, you know sort of approached how we um, lead and align everyone together has struggled with. Um, you know, since I've been, uh, you know, grinding on this particular problem for, uh, whew, at this point, better part of two years, uh, you know, I, I want to level set a little bit on, uh, you know, how we got here and, and make sure you sort of manage expectations uh, in line with that. So, you know, the founding premise of, uh, you know, the safe working group, um, secure access for everyone, uh, that eventually became uh, SIG Security um, was, uh, you know, really to, to uh, you know, bring together the points of view around security um, that were underrepresented in the constellation of projects that, um, you know, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation brings together and the Federation of Corporate Interests that uh, the CNCF represents. Um, for better or for worse, we start, um, you know, this uh, journey with a lot of these projects. Uh, and they're contributed, uh, you know, from a lot of different organizations. So, um, you know, I, I love the articulation of, of you know, the, the product company. Um, you know, we are starting as a multi-conglomerate, uh, you know, organization that has inherited uh, all kinds of legacies from everywhere uh, in a greenfield opportunity of uh, ecosystem change. So, um you know, the, the challenge in that of articulating exactly like what it is that we're doing uh, and how we get there um, is, uh, you know, in, uh, in that origination, uh, you know, really, really hard uh, because it's, we aren't actually coming from a, a point in time. Uh, you know, Greenfield's uh, premise, we're coming from, uh, you know, this, this federation of, of all these parts that are, that are coming together. Um, the white paper uh, as, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, it, it, it's tended, uh, you know, towards unified theory. Uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, perspective of, of what uh, this world is and, and how it should work in security. Uh, we've ripped out a lot of the uh, lower level uh, components in our architecture that, um, you know, for the last 20 years, we've, we've been able to, to make uh, security assumptions on and those things are no longer valid. Um, and then as we look at the components that we have in our system and, you know, how we uh, pull them together, um, 
you know, that uh, those things are all operating on a uh, complex set of, of assumptions that, uh, you know, many folks actually haven't aligned on or, you know, didn't have the context of what the underlying, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, things were or uh, how those things have actually changed. Um, and, you know, all of those things need to actually be articulated so we can have uh, aligned upon frames of reference that we can uh, draw forward. Um, you know, I, I think there's a great opportunity to establish uh, robust consensus about what those pillars are, um, you know, just in sort of assessing, uh, you know, where uh, you know, things might be heading um, in, in this articulation. The one thing that, that I, I can sort of get you an, an easy no on is I, I think that SIG security, uh, you know, defining uh, a, a comprehensive uh, representation of how uh, this is all implemented for all the use cases is probably outside of our pur purview. Um, you know, that is something that, um, you know, I, I've leaned on, you know, corporate interest in, in the past, uh, organizations, uh, you know, that have a stake in the game, um, you know, could align to, all right, here are the pillars, uh, you know, that, that we cover and, and how we implement that. That is, in my mind, um, you know, what, when we complete this journey, what success looks like is that we have, uh, you know, organizations that are actively interested in pursuing the needs of those end users, aligning to the consensus work that we've, uh, you know, built out, uh, or contesting the, 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 you know, those, those pillars, and, uh, you know, producing artifacts that, um, you know, uh, that articulate the specifics of, uh, you know, uh, a, a reference implementation uh, in line with uh, the work that we can do here in SIG security. Yeah, no, it totally makes sense, Dan. I mean, just to uh, okay. summarize, uh, I think my, uh, my, my goal was just that I, I see this, uh, and, I, and I think we would all agree to this, that these are set common issues that we see uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And then just to, yep. I thought there was an opportunity just to put out like a very, very generic framework. I mean, it's not, uh, and, I, uh, and I'm being totally uh, vendor agnostic, right? Which is, um, so just, this is, this is kind of the, what, you, what operators should be thinking about as you think about these things, because security has, for cloud native has always been, uh, it's been problematic. And here's how a lot of the initiatives of the CNCF and a lot of those projects, especially, right, which I like, which is Harbor and Intoto and Tough and, uh, and so many other mechanisms really, really go a very long way in uh, helping getting better security posture. And now just to, here's how you could potentially operate, operationalize it. Because I think, and I'm a bit, maybe I've gone uh, skewed a little bit more towards uh, that the maturity scale is all over the place, right? From an operator perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So and then just to give them that context. And I think that's why, and not make any assumptions. Right. And, 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 that, and that journey is hard and, and it'll take a lot. And, and um, you know, there are all kinds of ways in which folks kind of give themselves out, you know, either they're too big or they're too large. Uh, and, and, you know, they'll, they'll be like, oh, it doesn't apply to us. Uh, and, you know, expressing, uh, you know, the, uh, the needs, uh, you know, that need to be addressed uh, will help folks see, um, you know, oh, okay that's a consideration I haven't addressed uh, and I can you know, move on rather than, oh, this isn't valid. I need to, um, you know, think of DevSecOps uh, reference rather than this, this. Uh, you know, I, I think, um, you know, both can be valid, um, but, you know, if, if we're starting, uh, you know, from that, um, you know, quote unquote, pure cloud native perspective and, you know, articulating, uh, you know, the key components that we see, uh, you know, there, um, you know, that that's a, a defensible position. Right. Awesome. That totally makes sense. Thank you.
So I think from what I can take away as a next step is to maybe uh, uh, have a few more discussions with maybe Emily and Justin and see how we can collapse these efforts and, uh, and contribute to the existing uh, uh, work items and artifacts. Feels good. And a, and a lot of great points in the chat, by the way. Thank you all for the inputs. I mean, that's been great. And uh, would love to see, do we get to save this chat somewhere, somehow, uh, from this meeting? They are recorded and automatically uploaded to YouTube uh, a couple hours but after. Is it in the chat on the, on the Zoom chat? Is yeah. It is. I don't know, but I'll just copy paste it right now. Oh, that's included too? Thanks. Okay. It, it, it is included, included um, you know, in the archive. Uh, we currently don't do anything with that or um, you know, make that uh, generally available. So it, it is, but kind of it isn't. Um, so uh, you know, if we want to you know, log this as part of the um, issue, what is it, 405? Um, then um, you know what Matthew's done of just grabbing the chat and and dropping in that issue probably the, the easiest way to to make sure we close that loop. Just revisiting one thing, uh, I'm just gonna call it one more time to Justin Cormack. Uh, did you have an an update? I didn't see the no update brackets beside your name. So, uh, sorry, no, I uh, I don't have anything for this message? week. I, there's a couple of things I think wait till next week. How's this? Okay. Sorry, back to you, Vinay, and uh, Dan. No, uh, that, that's all I had, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. I, I really appreciate it. It's to my understanding. I'm good, Matthew. Thank you, Vinay. Justin Kapos will be Justin Kapos will be uh, picking up on the alignment of the, or at least bringing up the discussion of the alignment of white paper and the communication channels used for that, and what Vinay has put together today, as well as the landscape. Uh, is that something that will be uh, posted in the SIG security Slack or um, a new ticket on the GitHub page? Yeah, I'll um, uh, I'll put this in the CNCF uh, in the Slack channel. I'll just put a link to this. I think what we'll do is just create a separate channel because we're going to have a lot of conversation here. Um, and I wanted to talk with Brandon first to figure out if we want to reuse the existing landscape channel that we have or um, abandon that and make a new one. And uh, one additional question on the landscape. Does it, is it a uh, landscape in the generic sense or does it literally use the CNCF interactive landscape like we do? For no, generic, it, it's uh, generic sense. It does not use the CNCF landscape. And the few minutes we have left, does anyone else have any questions, comments, concerns? Okay, great. All right, so that wraps up for today, everyone. Thanks everyone for joining and hope everyone stays in good health and good spirits. Thanks, be well. Thank you. Thanks, Renee. Thanks, Matthew.
No, I, I think you've got to exit the meeting. <laughs> Oops, oh, I'm still on, okay, <laughs> thanks. Uh, yeah, I miss uh, I miss uh, the the last last chunk of the meeting. So uh, because I have other things to do, so I join back. But like, oh. <laughs> no, well, thanks for reminding me. Now I think the recording will end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice to meet you. Cheers. Yeah. See you.